Hey everyone, we're still in Revelation 120, which says the mystery of the seven stars, which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands, which you saw, are the seven churches. So this is part two. Part one, I discussed the angels, and now I'm discussing the seven churches, and Christ is presently revealing this mystery, this hidden truth to John about the stars and the lampstands. So these seven churches John is presently writing to is Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. In the past, Zechariah had a vision of a lampstand and two olive trees in Zechariah chapter 4. And I encourage you to go read Zechariah chapter 4. But it's basically a vision of the second temple that would be built in Jerusalem, that same temple that was destroyed in 70 AD. Now, we may revisit chapter 4 of Zechariah when we get to the two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11 because of the two olive trees. But for right now, we need to focus on the lampstand, which is the temple and the temple is a place of worship so in matthew 5 14 through 16 jesus says you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So, could these seven churches, could these seven places of worship mentioned in Revelation that John is writing to be a representation of seven types of worshipers in the future? Not just true believers, but worshipers of any kind. There are several different types of theories about the future of these seven churches. Uh, I've heard all kinds of theories. And so I'm throwing out one to you, which is, could it be if in the end the gospel has been provided to all to hear and all have heard and all have made their choice of response to the gospel, then everyone in the end could possibly belong to one of the seven churches. Have we not heard that our bodies are temples? And if so, then what we truly believe is what we truly worship, right? It's a thought. It's just a theory. I'm not saying it's a fact. It's just something to think about. So in the next several videos, we will be reading the specific messages to the churches. And we should be asking, what did this church represent when John wrote it in Revelation? What does this church represent in our current culture? And what will this church represent in the day of tribulation? Those three things past, present, and future, need to be asked about every single church when we read through them. There's not much more to add to the seven churches other than that, and that we will be going into the seven churches in the next several videos. So before I let you go, this is a good place to remember what Philippians 2, 12 through 16 says. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. 
So thank you for taking the time to listen. I love each and every one of you. Y'all have a great day full of blessings. I'll see you in the next video.